Hey everyone, this is Dan from DHTV and today I have a whole list of awesome tips for the HTC One M8 to help you get the most out of your phone. Let's get started. All right, so to kick things off, we're gonna take a look at some of the motion gestures built into the HTC One M8. So we'll go ahead and lock the screen. Now when the screen is locked, all you do is double tap on the screen and it'll wake the phone. And from here, you can access a whole bunch of different features. So for example, if we swipe to the left, we can bring up our home screen. If we swipe to the right, we can bring up Blink Feed. If we open up an application and we lock our phone and we double tap to wake it, if we swipe upwards, it'll bring up that last application that we were in. Now, for those of you that have your phone hooked up with a carrier, if you actually swipe downwards, it'll bring up a voice chat or voice calling feature. Unfortunately, I don't have mine enabled, so you won't see that, but all you have to do is pull downwards and it'll bring up that feature. And as you can see as well, we have some applications and by tapping on them, nothing really happens. They just stay still. But if you actually take those and swipe them into the middle, it'll go ahead and open them up. Now along this side as well, you can see that there's a little arrow up top. We'll just quickly take a look at that. You can see that there's a little arrow. I'm not sure if you were able to see it, but if you can catch that arrow and swipe to the left quick enough, you can bring up extra pages where you can add widgets to your lock screen. So in this case, I went ahead and added a calculator to it. So I can just do some quick calculations if I need to. If not, I can go back to my main screen here or just swipe in any direction here to bring up what I'm looking for. Another great feature with the HTC One M8 is the ability to access your camera quickly and on the go with your phone locked. So if we lock our screen here, we turn horizontally and we press on the volume rocker up, it'll bring up our camera screen. So now you'll never miss those amazing pictures like of an iPhone just sitting on a desk. Built into the HTC One M8 is Blink Feed, an area where you can access your social media sites, news, and things like that. I personally like it, but if you don't, that's okay because you can remove it. What we'll do is hold on an open section of our home screen and it'll bring up some settings here, which we'll get into. But what we wanna do is tap on add apps and widgets here. And you notice that Blink Feed is located at the top left. So what we'll do is tap and hold on that and we'll just slide it to remove and it'll go ahead and remove Blink Feed. Now one downfall to this is that you can't actually fill that space up with anything else. All you do is tap on it and Blink Feed will come back. It's not like you can remove it and then go ahead and add, say, the bookmarks to it. It just doesn't allow you to. Now, you do have other pages or other panels in this section where you can add different widgets if you'd like. So if I wanted to add the calculator app here to that third panel, I could go ahead and do so. And then when I go to my panels, you'll see I'm on my home page. If I swipe across, I'll have the calculator on my third panel. But if you want to bring back Blink Feed for any reason, you could just go back into this widget section, just tap on the plus and Blink Feed will be returned for you. Now, as I said, if you tap and hold on the home screen in a blank section, it brings up these home screen settings where you can personalize it. They're pretty much the same settings you would access with the M7 in the settings panel. This is just a quicker way of accessing them. Now, another feature, if you pinch inwards, it'll bring up that widget section so you can access that a little bit quicker as well. Moving forward is a feature that should be enabled by default on all smartphones, and that is the battery percentage. As you can see up top on the M8, we do have a battery level, but that doesn't show the exact percentage. So if we go into our settings application here, and we scroll all the way down to where it says power, you'll see we can see the percentage of battery we have left. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more, you'll see it says show battery level. And if we enable that, you'll see that now we see the battery percentage by the battery level. A quick way to access your quick settings is to pull down with two fingers and you can see we are immediately brought to our settings section rather than having to click the extra button up top here to bring us to that page. So as long as we're here, we can actually edit and customize the quick settings that appear. If we click up top, you'll be brought to the edit quick settings tab. And you can see we've got all the different quick settings available to us, but also a little line that says hidden items drag to add to quick settings. So if we drag anything below this line, they will be removed from the quick settings. If we drag anything above, they'll be added to our quick settings. So if I didn't need the do not disturb setting here, I'll just drag it down if I didn't need Wi-Fi hotspot, but I wanted to have, let's say GPS up top. 
I can go ahead and add all those, tap done, and now when I bring up my quick settings, it now has my custom set up quick settings rather than the defaults. Moving to our applications tab here, you'll see that everything is listed in three. We can actually increase the grid size here by tapping these three dots on the right side here, tapping on grid size, and we can actually make it a four by five grid size. So now we see four applications across by five down, and it just allows you to have more applications on your screen's real estate. Now, while we're here, let's go ahead and take a look at how you can hide some applications. For example, if you have a carrier that's preloaded a whole bunch of different applications that you just don't want, you can hide them. So up top here, again, we'll tap on the three dots. It brings up some settings here. We can tap hide and unhide apps. So all we have to do now is select the apps we wanna hide. So if I didn't wanna have, let's say my flashlight or my Fitbit app, I can hide both of those, hit done. And now you can see they're no longer available or showing on my app section. If you wanna bring them back, it's very simple. Go back to hide and unhide apps. You can just go ahead and reselect them, hit done, and they will return and they'll be back on your app screen once again. Now, one feature that's overlooked a lot is the way that you select words. So if you make a mistake typing something, like let's say I wanted to change filming, I'd have to tap and hold on the word. And it's a little bit difficult sometimes to just pull this across. So you can actually magnify this. So what you would do is just go into your quick settings here, tap on settings, and then we'll scroll down to accessibility. Now from this section, if we scroll down and tap on show magnifier, it'll actually allow us to magnify the words that we're trying to select. So back on Twitter, here if I tap and hold on the filming section if I pull across now you can see it's magnifying it so you can actually see what you're selecting a little bit easier and then do your cut copy or removal of the word a little bit easier one feature that works in pretty much any application is the ability to scroll up very quickly. So whether you're on a website or if you're in Blink Feed and you've scrolled down quite a bit, if you wanna jump right back to the top, all you have to do is tap up top in your little notification bar and it'll put you back to the top of the page. For those of you who want to take screenshots, there's a few ways you can do so. You can hold the lock button and the volume rocker down. It'll take a screenshot for you. Or you can hold the lock button and press the home button quickly and it'll take a screenshot for you as well. You can also add a feature within your quick settings if we just go to the edit tab once again. If you go into the section below the hidden items, you can actually pull up a screenshot tab, hit done, and now when you go into your quick settings, you'll have this screenshot tab and it'll take a screenshot shot of whatever page you're on before you tapped onto the quick settings. Now, if you ever run into an issue where your phone freezes and you just can't move anywhere, you can unfreeze it by just holding the power and volume up rocker until it powers down. Once it powers down, it'll go ahead and power back up and it should work as normal. Now, a couple of quick things you can do, as I showed you at the beginning of the video, if we basically go to our lock screen here, you can open up different quick applications at the bottom just by swiping upwards. But if you wanna customize these, you can do so very easily just by moving them out and then moving the ones you want down there in. So that way you can access the specific applications you want. So back to the lock screen here, if we just tap to open now, you can see my Gmail is available for me down there. Alongside this, one last tip here, if you wanna access Google Now, for those of you that use it, just swipe up from the home button here, it'll bring up your Google Now, and you can access all the features within it. Anyway, guys, I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyable. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribing for more videos like this one. I'm always available to help you guys out, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comment box or even leave your suggestions for some awesome tips that you use with the HTC One M8 or Android in general. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.